Hey, y'all, and thank y'all for tuning in. Now, if this is your first time, welcome. Now, if you've been here before, welcome back. Y'all, I am truly excited, and that's because we are going over the Steak Lovers Ultimate French Dip Sandwich, y'all. And on this channel, the food is always the star. Y'all ready? All right, y'all, we're going to work with our veggies. First, we're going to slice this bell pepper into sections, y'all. Take a look. We don't need any of that. All we need is the section we slicing, y'all. We just going to keep what we slicing. And that is an easy way to slice the bell pepper, y'all. Okay? Slice it where the edges are, where it coves, okay? And make sure you hold the knife the right way. And then get to slicing julienne style, y'all. We want these bell peppers to be julienne sliced. And this is what this method is called a julienne cut. All right, now that we got the bell peppers going, we're going to do the same with the onions, y'all. We're going to julienne and see how I roll that onion around. You roll it around to get that first layer of skin loose. It always leaves a layer for you to get your finger in and pull it off. And you just go round and round, y'all. And then we're going to julienne slice the onions up. And then we're going to add some butter in with these veggies, y'all. Yes, not oil, butter. Mm -hmm. And make sure that you break the onions apart. Don't leave them stuck together. Go ahead and take the time and make it the right way. Get your hands in there and break those onions up. Once you do that, y'all, then we're going to add some lemon juice in there and whatever flavored agents we want. Now, did you know Tony's made a no salt seasoning, but we're going to rock the original right now. We need a little bit of sodium because I don't put salt itself in the dish. Yes, that's right, y'all. And we're going to work with top sirloin yes top sirloin is the cut we working with and do y'all butter your meat or do you just use oil you should use butter butter is actually healthy for you if used the proper way and we're gonna butter up this meat instead of adding that oil we don't want all that oil in our system y'all we want to go ahead and butter it. And when you butter your meat, you have to rub it well. You have to mix it in well. It is more of a mess when you take the time to butter your meat. Add whatever flavored agents you want and make sure, again, you rub in those flavor agents inside of that meat. And it will taste better. And you can let it sit on the counter for about 15 minutes and look what you get. Mm, mm, mm. That seasoning will adhere better if you rub that butter in. You don't see it just floating in oil. No, no, no. That butter now is in the meat. And then what we're going to do after we take a look at it and see what it's all about, because it's real thin. This meat is shaved extra thin and we work with it. Notice it doesn't have that much fat in it. You don't have to have a fatty cut of meat to have your meat tender. It is about the marinade process, the cooking process too as well, y'all. Next, we're going to get started on this bread, all right? What side do we slice? We want to slice the side that has already an opening, it looks like. We want to slice the side that already showing us the side to slice. We want to slice that side that is showing us where to slice. That's it. That's simple. And then we turn around and we want to butter our bread, butter and garlic, y'all. Minced garlic, that's it. Now we got that bread buttered up, y'all. It's time to get that cast iron skillet working, y'all. We're going to take that top sirloin and place it in that cast iron skillet on high heat, y'all. This butter is working. Now, believe it or not, the skillet's on high heat, but I will be cutting it off. Just as I get this piece in right here, I'm going to cut the skillet down to the off position totally. Why? Because I'm cooking this meat and I need it to not overcook. And I want it to get a little bit of a sear. So having it on high heat, prepped and ready to go, I can cut the heat down. And then I cut it back on to about level six so the heat does not dissipate as much and I cook it thoroughly on one side and then I'll take the meat and we'll flip it to the other side okay and I'm not going to leave it long on the next side 
there is a method to this cooking process. And the method to it is, is to not overcook the sirloin steak. Because if we overcook this sirloin steak, because it's shaved extra thin, this sirloin steak will turn into leather. And we don't want a leather dip sandwich, y'all. We want a French dip sandwich, y'all. That's truly what we want. So we're going to take our time and cook the meat. This is back on high heat. You can see that butter, butter sizzling in the pan. Yes, because we are playing with the heat. We're playing with it. It's back on high heat because we have another batch of top sirloin steak in that cast iron skillet. Again, we're going through the whole process here, y'all. It's sped up, but this is the entire process. I am going through it, turning that meat. Once I see that it has a little bit of color on the side, I'm pulling it off because the meat is still cooking. Wow, it is off the heat. Once you pull it off, it's still cooking. Yes, the temperature does dissipate rapidly, but you are still cooking that meat even though it's off the heat. It's going through that process, y'all. Mm-hmm. So now I got that meat good on one side. We're going to drop it for a few on the next side. We are going to repeat this process. And that is one of the things that we are taught in the restaurant is redundancy is the reward for your guest. Because if you repeat that process and repeat that process and do it the same way, guess what? You are doing it the restaurant way. Because it is about redundancy. It is about going through the process, learning it step for step, y'all. And then you can do this at home. Why spend all that money at these restaurants when you can do this at home? And yes, I'm a chef. And yes, I used to work at the restaurants. And yes, I have my own private business going and I partner with someone too. But I still want you to be able to do this for yourself. Y'all my family. Anybody that subscribes to me is my family. Anybody watching this video is my family. I mean, we all humanity, right? Yes. All right, y'all. We take a little bit of beef base and add that into that water that we added in there. And we take in the jus from the steak. And we're going to incorporate that into this water. We're going to bring it to a nice rolling boil in this cast iron skillet, y'all. Yes, we are. And then... We're going to go ahead and incorporate our veggies. I'm dropping some minced garlic in here right now. And then we'll turn around and put the rest of our veggies in there, y'all, and get that up, sauteing it up right. That's what it's all about. This is, again, on high heat. You'll see most of the time, in order to get that sear, you want to start off at a higher level of heat. So now, Whatever heat level you comfortable with, that is the heat level you work with. And then you'll be able to dial it up as you go on. The more you get used to cooking at a higher heat level, the better and more efficient you will be when you cook at that higher heat level. It takes time. It takes practice, y'all. Keep working it. Keep working it. And look at these veggies, y'all. We're not done. But we almost there, y'all. They are looking pretty spiffy if i may add y'all yeah we gonna rock and we gonna roll we gonna keep them going y'all because that's what it's all about now we ready to pull and that skillet's still working y'all so we're gonna add this water into it now skillet is still working yes we are gonna be looking at making us a you now y'all notice i left some veggies still in there y'all now we're gonna add that beef base into there for a continuation. Now, you don't have to add this right here. This is a cornstarch slurry. Cornstarch slurry is essentially water and cornstarch. You can add that in if you desire to thicken it, if you want it real thick. Then you put more water in to thin it back out to a nice level. Some don't do that, but I like to do that, y'all. And you see how those veggies look. We have our bread toasted looking nice y'all okay now we got going to add these lovely golly y'all that looks pretty good y'all i must say that looks pretty good and you are making this at home yourself keep that in mind you are making this at home yourself because this is something you can do that loaf of bread y'all cost me one dollar 
One dollar. The bell peppers cost me about three dollars. The mushrooms cost me about two dollars and fifty cents. Look at that, y'all. And this is not all the mushrooms that I bought. These aren't all the bell peppers that I bought. These aren't all the onions that I bought. And this is not all the minced garlic that I bought. And this is not even all the top sirloin steak that I bought. Take a look at it, y'all. This is something you can make at home yourself. And then you can make another meal. This sandwich right here, using the costing method that we use in the kitchen, cost me $3 and 60 cents to make y'all three dollars and 60 cents to make this sandwich that can feed two people easily because that is an entire loaf of french bread y'all that's what it's about y'all if y'all feel like it's something that we miss or something that y'all want to see let us know so we can add it to the playlist that's what it's all about y'all now we're gonna go ahead and close up this sandwich and we use our knife and notice how the bread did not break on the opposite side because the side we chose to cut on, right? Was already almost perforated in a way for us, y'all. Now let's take a gander, y'all. That looked good now, I must say, y'all. And you see how the meat turned out, y'all. It's not well done. And you see how thin the meat was shaved, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. Now, if you want yours well done, go ahead and have it well done, y'all. But this is the proper way to cook a French dip sandwich, y'all. Now, y'all be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, y'all. And we'll see y'all on the next side, meaning we'll see y'all in your up next section, in your browser section, y'all. We need your support, and we appreciate your love. And thank y'all for tuning in. We'll see y'all on the next side.